All right, um, so I'm going to talk to you today about using containers at NERSC. Um, today that means Shifter, uh, in the future that will mean Podman, so I'll talk to you a little bit about uh, what that means. Um, my objective is to convince you that containers are cool, and if you haven't tried them, uh, I encourage you to do so. Uh, so you may have heard about containers, uh, maybe on Twitter or just uh, from your collaborators, uh, but you might be wondering, like, what is all this uh, fuss about? <laughs> so in the last 10 years or so, um, the use of containers has grown enormously. Um, this, uh, this plot I'm showing you is, is some consulting research firm's estimation of how much money is generated by containers. I know that's not like a great proxy for how many are in use or how useful they are, but here you go. Um, the data uh, start in 2015 and are pretty much going uh, up linearly. So um, somebody out there <laughs> thinks uh, containers are valuable, um, and I agree. So people uh, who are using the cloud, you know, so AWS, Azure, um, find containers really useful uh, for standing up uh, microservices, running um, any kind of pipeline. Uh, containers are, are super good for, for that kind of thing. They're being run um, inside services like Kubernetes. Um, probably a lot of what you interact with on the internet is uh, running containers under the hood. Um, so that's great. Uh, why are we talking about them today? Many of the things that make containers really useful also can help us as HPC users too. So that's, that's what I hope to show you. Um, for anybody who doesn't know what a container is, because it is kind of a weird nebulous uh, concept, if you're familiar with a virtual machine, so maybe uh, if you have um, a Linux system and you need to run some Windows software, you might boot up a virtual machine inside um, to give you access to that other OS. Um, I'm not a virtual machine expert, but <laughs> it, it basically means that you need a whole copy of your operating system in order to, to do that. Um, a a container is a little bit different because it it can share the kernel of the host system. So on Perlmutter, you know, we have a Linux kernel, and any container that you bring onto the system is is going to share uh, what we already have on Perlmutter. Um, so what does that mean? Containers are much more lightweight uh, than a, a virtual machine. Um, they can still be big <laughs> depending on what what you've got in them, but you know we're on the order of uh, you know, a few gigabytes for the smallest ones up to, you know, 10 or 15. So, you know, manageable. Um, you can build a container on your laptop, for example, and take it to a brand new system like Perlmutter. Um, and that's what makes them really powerful. You can kind of pack, pack up your software and not have to be rebuilding all the time. Uh, so that's, that's kind of in a nutshell what containers uh, do. So who can benefit from containers? I would argue pretty much everybody here today. Um, but just some of the pain points that they can help address are rebuilding software. Um, I don't know about you guys. Maybe you really like rebuilding software, but <laughs> um, it, it can be time consuming. Um, if your system has an OS upgrade like we do periodically at NERSC, you may need to rebuild um, You know, for Moving your software, obviously you need to rebuild. Um, so uh, that's one use case. Um, if you want your software stack to be stable and unaffected by changes happening, you know, outside of your control, containers are great. They give you, you know, um, your own environment where you're the admin, basically. Um, if you are a Python user, uh, and I know many of you are, Containers can be especially helpful for you because um, the package imports that you're doing are pretty metadata heavy. Uh, and as, at large scale, you know, if you're running, you know, several hundred nodes, that import step can take a long time. Uh, containers can help you. We'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, and as I mentioned, if you want to move uh, your software from system to system, it doesn't always work, but um, a lot of the time it does. So. Anyway, a lot of benefits here um, that I think are, are worth um, exploring. Um, so for anybody who's not super familiar with containers, I just wanted to lay out a little bit of the vocabulary um, so that we can all uh, don't want to lose anybody. So um, you may have heard the word Dockerfile. Um, 
there are different frameworks, obviously. So in Singularity, it's a Singularity file, but a Docker file is just a text file where you kind of write out the recipe um, for how you want to build your software in the image. Um, human readable, this, this is how you um, specify what you want. The image is the thing that gets built from the Docker file. Um, so image uh, is a little bit different than container. Uh, you, you kind of hear people use them interchangeably, but they, they do have slightly different meaning. So image is kind of like the blueprint for what eventually will be the container, or you can think of it as like a seed kind of. Like a seed is not a plant, but it contains like all the information that it needs to eventually become a plant. Um, so that's the, kind of the difference. Um, so the container is the running instance of the image. It's what's actually doing, you know, the calculation. It's hooked into the, the OS talking to your GPU. So um, the runtime is the framework that enables your container to run. Could be a lot of things. Um, you're probably familiar with Docker, maybe Singularity. We'll talk about Podman. Um, a registry is a place you want to put your container. So once you've finished um, building your image, uh, you probably want to move it somewhere like Perlmutter. Um, uh, but you, uh, one good way to do that is to go through an intermediate uh, registry. So it could be Docker Hub. We've got several at NERSC I'll talk about. Um, and finally, uh, one thing I'll talk about a little bit later is something called a volume mount or a bind mount. And a, a good thing and a bad thing about containers is that they are their own little universe. And anything that you didn't put in the image while you were building it, um, isn't there. So if, if you have a big data set you want to uh, analyze with the software in your container, you're going to need to give your container access to these uh, images. Usually what that means is that you're going to create a volume mount at runtime. So you're going to say, hey, this directory where my images uh, are, I'm going to mount them in so my software can access them. So anyway, these are just kind of some uh, important vocab words to know in the world of containers. Oh, all right, so now that we've talked a lot about that, you're probably wondering, okay, fine, like, how how do I really do this? Um, so today at NERSC, uh, the container runtime that we support is called Shifter. Shifter uh, is a lot like Docker, and you might wonder, well, like, I, I like Docker, why can't I just use Docker? Um, a few reasons. The first is security. So uh, inside a Docker container, uh, you can become root, which uh, we obviously don't want on a shared supercomputer system. It's important to have uh, restricted and secure permission. So that's one thing. The other thing is, if you were to run Docker, it wouldn't have any capability to help you run at large scale, which hopefully um, a lot of you want to do, given that you're at NERSC. Um, so there's a lot of kind of cool things under the hood that Shifter does to help you uh, scale up like you would on a system like Perlmutter. Um, that said, Shifter looks and feels a lot like Docker. So a good way to get started is just to learn, um, install, and kind of get familiar with Docker on your laptop or anywhere that you have access. Um, we wrote up a tutorial called the Shifter for Beginners tutorial. It's, it's basically for people who are, like we say, beginners, um, and it will walk you through installing Docker and, and running, building and running your first uh, container. So. This is probably um, the best way that you can get started. Uh, there's a lot of good uh, tutorial material out there for Docker, which mostly applies to Shifter. Here's uh, what a Docker file looks like. So I said it's um, plain text, human readable. Um, I pulled this one straight out of our Shifter docs page. So if you go to our how to use Shifter page, um, this is the example you're gonna see here. So what's going on in this Docker file? You're saying, hey, I want to start from uh, an image that already has the Ubuntu operating system installed. Um, so this is awesome. I don't know uh, if any of you have installed or really enjoy installing Ubuntu, great. But it's nice to be able to just grab something and uh, start to build on top. Um, because we're in Ubuntu, we can go ahead and use the Ubuntu apt-get uh, package manager to install whatever we want. And this is something I really love about containers because you'd never be able to do this on Perlmutter because you're not a sysadmin. But in a container, you are the sysadmin. So you can install whatever you need um, for your application. So in this case, uh, we'll get some compilers and we'll get Python and we'll get pip. Um, 
In this image, we're demonstrating how to install um, mpitch to eventually use MPI on Perlmutter. So we're building um, mpitch from source. The reason we do that instead of apt getting it is because um, I'll talk about this in a minute, but in order to enable um, fast Cray optimized mpitch at nurse, we're going to swap out at runtime <laughs> uh, the mpitch you put in your image. So uh, that doesn't work unless you build it like we're demonstrating. Um, so we build mpitch. I mean, the, the commands, the wget, the, the tar, make, make, install. Hopefully that looks familiar to anybody who's done um, any building of packages. You just have to get used to the um, Docker syntax. But otherwise, it's just it's just a recipe for, for building your stack. Um, so how do you kind of choose uh, what image to start from, um, or how do you write this Docker file? For a lot of machine learning users, you can kind of start with what NVIDIA provides, which is really great. Um, so it's, uh, especially for um, deep learning users, containers are um, awesome. The, they should work, I think, for the most part, right out of the box. NERSC provides some uh, images that have a little bit of additional stuff inside of them. I think like H5Pi, um, maybe they'll discuss that in the upcoming deep learning talk, um, but they'll give you a little bit of extra utilities. So if you visit some of these links here, which uh, I know I can't show you right now, but after the, the talk, um, when we post the slides. We also have kind of a newer repo where we're um, putting in some MPI for Pi, some open MPI examples. Um, so you can you can see both the Docker file here and use the image at NERSC. So this kind of gives you some examples. Um, future work for us is to develop a more centralized, user-friendly kind of set of base images. Um, so that's, that's in progress. Um, but this is what we have uh, for, for today. Okay, as I said, um, once you've built an image, say, on your laptop, uh, to get it to Perlmutter, you've got to hop through a registry. Um, so there are a couple options for you. Um, you can use Docker Hub. Uh, it's public. Everything you put up there, I think, by default is viewable by everyone, so don't put your Nobel Prize winning work. Uh, uh, we have, um, it's generally free for non-commercial use. Um, so. I know uh, they've got a lot of licensing things going on, but I think for, for all of you, uh, you should be okay. Um, NERSC has two of our own registries. So we have uh, registry.nurse.gov. For anybody who goes through spin training, you'll automatically be added um, here. Uh, and this is kind of our newer, uh, shinier registry. Um, if you haven't gone through spin training, but you'd like access, uh, you can submit a ticket and, and we can enable you. Um, so please uh, don't hesitate to ask. Otherwise, we have our older registry.services.nurse.gov. Um, all users are automatically enabled here, um, but this is going to be deprecated in favor of registry.nurse.gov. So you're welcome to use this, um, but you should be aware eventually we're going to we're going to move everybody out of it. Um, and uh, to get your image then from a registry onto NERSC, you're going to use the shifter image pull utility. So from Docker Hub, it would just be Ubuntu latest. Um, from registry, you'll have to do a shifter image login, um, and then you can pull. But uh, pretty straightforward to, to get your image onto Perlmutter. All right, so I said shifter was like Docker. Um, and so here's some of the kind of uh, differences you should be aware of in using shifter. So we. We try to be helpful uh, for NERSC users, and we kind of give you things by default that we think might be useful for you. Um, it's not transparent to the user, which is not great, but um, this is what the situation is. So we have uh, loaded by default when you use Shifter the mpitch module and the GPU module. Um, so the mpitch module is loading all of these Cray libraries, and uh, just in case you want to swap out your mpitch for the fast Cray mpitch, um, we're making that available to you. There are circumstances where you may not want this. Um, for example, if you're using OpenMPI, uh, there are other circumstances where it could cause issues. We've sometimes seen um, glibc issues happening. Um, users are like, why, why do I see this mpitch thing? I'm not even using mpitch. Um, the reason is because we're inserting it. And if maybe the OS in your image is old, um, uh, you'll, you'll see this error. So 
anyway, be aware that this is what's happening. And if you want to disable them, uh, you totally can. You just need to do a module equals none. Uh, so that will turn them all off. If for some reason you wanted to say only GPU, you could do a dash dash module uh, GPU. So if you want to learn more about our modules and, and what they're doing, you can visit our docs. Oh, and one last thing. If you're doing a CUDA aware MPI, you'll want a different uh, module. So this is our CUDA MPitch. So this is if you're moving CUDA objects with MPI, uh, it will need to load a, a slightly different set of libraries for you. All right, so how do you use Shifter in a job? Um, pretty straightforward. You're going to use your same kind of uh, S alloc um, syntax that you would for an interactive job. The, the difference is this dash dash image. Um, so this tells Slurm, hey, please get my uh, shifter image ready for this job. In this case, uh, I'm using Ubuntu latest, but you could put in whatever you want. And then um, once your node's ready, you can issue an S run command. Uh, shifter, because you've already requested this image, will automatically use the image that you've asked for. And anything that follows the shifter command will occur inside the container. So pretty, pretty easy, hopefully. Um, it looks pretty similar in a batch job. So we'll just uh, change around the S alloc syntax for the S batch directives. So we'll have uh, the image request up here. And then uh, once your job is ready to go, then the same uh, command will run um, inside your container. And you'll just submit that like you would any uh, batch script. Damn it. OK, um, so I'll, I'll give you some tips here. Some of these are inspired by kind of common tickets or common kind of user questions. Try to save you <laughs> some headache. Uh, Oh, and let you know um, that shifter performance can be really good. Um, so especially Python users, um, shifter can be especially helpful for applications that are really using a lot of uh, metadata on the file system. So how does this work? Part of the um, major engineering work, and I think something really cool about shifter is the um, way that it handles the uh, image. So your image uh, is a read-only squash file. Um, that's, uh, that's the format that uh, it's in after you have done a shifter image pull. And then during your job, it's on our Luster, our high-performance Luster file system via a read-only squash mount. And that basically means that you have access uh, on a per node basis to all of the information in your image in this really fast uh, read-only mount. It also means that you're not subject to the wider um, file system contention because you have kind of your own private access. It's sort of like being a VIP, I think. So um, how does that benefit you? If you're doing a, a Python import um, PyTorch, and PyTorch is a huge library, it's going to take time to move all of that information um, you know, from the file system to each node in your job. But for Shifter, because of this cool um, read-only uh, mount, the uh, you're not subject to all of the um, same metadata contention. So uh, the plot here is from the Shifter paper from 2015. Basically, um, you could ignore the two LVMs. These are uh, performed in Docker. But the five uh, bars to the left were done on Cori. And you can see that for the first access, so thinking about the first time you import a package, um, how long does it take? And you can see shifter is um, pretty much the fastest. Uh, the data warp is the burst buffer. But anyway, um, really good uh, and robust performance, especially for Python. OK, another tricky place for users is the volume mounting that I mentioned um, at the beginning of the talk. So getting. Uh, data, or maybe um, like say you're actively developing a repository, you want to be able to make changes without having to rebuild your image. The best way to do that is uh, via a volume mount. So you can take files that exist outside your image and mount them into, say, a directory called data. Um, if this goes wrong, you might see something that looks like invalid volume map or by mount failed. Um, so there are a couple of reasons this could fail. 
So the first is that the, the file permissions have to be suitable to perform the bind mount all the way up to the root of the file system. Um, so like for a, a shared directory, like on the community file system, you may not, oh, you, you don't own the directory. So um, to get around that, you may need to do a set F ACL command um, to change the permission so that shifter uh, is able to perform the bind mount. Um, another tricky place is that you can't create more than one level of directory when you perform the bind mount. So you can't say, you know, pass foo bar uh, unless foo already exists. So um, it's like the equivalent of uh, the make der dash p command um, that you can't do that. So that, that's another place. Uh, you just want to make sure you're not trying to create um, too many directories. So if you have trouble uh, with any of your volume mounting, check out our troubleshooting page. We've got a little bit more info, and then we'll, we'll show you how to use the setf ACL command to fix your um, uh, volume mount permissions. OK, um, some tips, especially for open MPI users and um, NVIDIA deep learning users are uh, in this category uh, often. So as I said, we're loading the mpitch module by default, um, but that's not helpful for you uh, if you're using MPI. So you'll want to turn that off um, if you want to do that, but keep GPU support, you can do a dash dash module GPU. Um, one additional step is that you're going to want to suggest or you're going to need to tell Slurm to use the system PMI2 instead of the Cray PMI. So that's what we're doing here with this dash dash MPI is PMI2. And inside shifter, we need to tell it module none in this case. Um, so this uh, should be suitable to get your open MPI um, running correctly on Perlmutter. Um, and of course, you'll have to provide your own open MPI installation in your image or use, use an NVIDIA image um, that already has one. Another tricky place is uh, the uh, newest Macs have the uh, M1 architecture, so ARM, which is not x86, and Perlmutter is an x86 system. So if you'd like to build an image on your laptop but have it run on Perlmutter, you're going to need to do what's called a uh, cross-platform or a multi-arch build. Um, if you want to do that, uh, you're going to do this um, Docker build X create. This is creating something called a new build context, which is uh, what is needed to build for um, additional OSs. So in this example here, in our new build context, we're building for both uh, an AMD 64 uh, architecture. So that's, that's your typical x86. And we're also building for an ARM architecture. Um, so that would be something for your um, Mac M1. You do the build and the push in the same command usually to make this easier. Um, there are a few ways that this can go badly. <laughs> I don't want to go into too much detail, um, but you'll want to be a little bit careful um, how you set this up uh, because it can be kind of messy to do the, the cross-platform builds. Um, the links here have some info and, and a little more uh, in our own documentation. OK, but in general, uh, for any shifter problem, um, I think this applies. Check out the help command. I was using shifter for a long time before I ever <laughs> tried shifter help, and it's got a lot of uh, useful info uh, packed in there. So uh, check that out. If you're running into errors that look file permissions related or you know something like you know root cannot access, um, it, it could be that um, your image was not built with uh, user permissions uh, or meant to run only with user permissions. So a quick check for that would be on your own system. So not in um, Shifter, but in Docker, try running with the user permissions 500, which basically uh, replicates what Shifter will do once your image gets onto the system. If it fails here, this is a good indication that you're going to need to rethink um, how your image was built and make sure that it is, uh, it's not trying to, it doesn't assume root access, which you will not have and shifter. Um, another uh, general piece of troubleshooting advice is that you can always kind of hop into your running container to see what's going on. I do this all the time. So in an interactive job, um, you can just start your image and append um, the kind of shell you want. So I'm a bash user. So I add a bin bash 
and now I'm dropped into my image. I can look to see, you know, is this the version I expected? Is everything linked correctly? Um, or if you'd like to do that using Slurm, the syntax is a little bit different. You need an S run, you need a dash dash PTY, but otherwise it's the same. So uh, you can look around, try to see if you can figure out what's going on. Um, and then exit will get you back out of your um, container. All right, so I just spent a long time telling you about Shifter at NERSC, but the real plan is to phase out Shifter in favor of a new framework called Podman. So I wanted to just give you a preview about that uh, in the last few minutes of this. Hopefully, I'm a little long. Okay, all right. So um, Podman is an open container initiative compliant framework developed by Red Hat. Uh, what does that mean? It adheres to a community set of standards, um, and it kind of looks and feels a lot more like uh, tools like Docker that you may be used to, where Shifter kind of has its own rules um, to some extent. Podman, uh, you could download today and use it on your laptop. Um, so there's nothing special about, uh, you know, it has to run at NERSC. The really cool thing about Podman is that it provides something called rootless containers. So that's really great from a security point of view because it means that the container doesn't have any kind of um, special permissions. It runs as the user. And it's really good from a user point of view because inside your image, it feels to you like you do have root access. So there's not this weird um, situation we currently have in Shifter where your uh, image is going to fail because it assumes you need root. Um, that's just fine uh, in Podman. So it does. Uh, it achieves that through this cool mapping of um, sub UID, sub GID. Uh, I won't go into that. Uh, but anyway, uh, the, the thing you probably care about the most is that this is going to give you the ability to start building images uh, directly on Perlmutter. So you won't have to build on your laptop anymore. Um, finally, you can just build right at NERSC, which I think is going to be awesome. Um, Podman isn't going to work out of the box on a system like NERSC, so we've been doing a lot of hard work to modify it uh, so that it will run smoothly on our systems and deliver the same kind of good performance that uh, you're used to now in Shifter, maybe. Um, so we're going to do the same kind of uh, cool squash mount trick to help um, ensure that it will scale and be fast. Um, so we're, we're not going to yank Shifter away. We're going to run both of them alongside each other while we help uh, users transition over to Podman. Um, we'll start inviting early users soon. Um, there's kind of a philosophical difference between Shifter and Podman in that Shifter kind of does things for you without you asking. And when we switch to Podman, it's going to be the opposite, where you won't have anything unless you ask for it. So if that means you want MPI support, you'll have to do a, a request the MPI module. If you want to move in an environment variable, you're going to have to specify. So it's a little more work for the user, but it's also a lot more transparent um, about what is actually happening. OK, in summary, um, containers have a lot of benefits for HPC users. If you haven't tried them, please give them a shot. Um, they can be really uh, powerful. Uh, Shifter is our current container framework on Cori and Perlmutter. Um, if you want to learn how to use Shifter, um, our docs are a great resource. We have a beginner tutorial that is set up just for you. Um, and if you get stuck, please write us a ticket so uh, we can help you. And finally, we're going to be uh, bringing the Podman uh, container framework up on Perlmutter. Uh, we'll be inviting people to join us. So uh, thank you very much. <laughs>